Hi, I'm Megan. I'm Colin. And we are the hosts of Pet Sitter Confessional. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you also to Pet Sitters Associates and our awesome Patreon people for supporting today's show. If you don't know what a Patreon person is, it's kind of a weird phrase. They are someone who has found value in the almost 500 episodes that we've done. They love what we do. They want to continue listening to episodes and hearing other people, other pet sitters talk about their businesses every week. If that sounds like you and you would like to support us as well, you could go to PetSitterConfessional.com slash support to see all of the ways that you can help. We've had employees for a few years now, and one time a few years ago, we had three employees, and they all left us within the span of a few weeks. And it was a really scary time. (laughs) We didn't know what we were going to do. We had no employees. It was just Colin and I, and we had to reassess how we wanted to continue going and if we wanted to continue running the business at all. We had hit a roadblock in our business. These come up many times. If you've ever seen that graph of what an entrepreneur is like, an entrepreneurship, it's not a straight line. It's got all these curves and arrows, and it's, it generally goes up, but there's a lot of ups and downs. We had to shift our mindset around this issue. What we wanted to do when we had lost all of our employees was bury our heads in the sand, avoid it. We wanted to just watch movies and eat junk food for an entire week and then pop our heads back up when everything was fine and we had more employees to take over visits. But as the CEOs of our businesses, as the business leaders, as bosses, we cannot do that. We cannot just avoid issues. We have to face them head on. And that's what you have to do with these roadblocks. It really was a process of thinking outside of ourselves. I think it was the first time that we really had to do that in our business of recognizing that we really and truly were growing something that was beyond us, something that at some point we would not be able to handle all by ourselves. And that at this moment, we had to take what we wanted to do at the personal level, which was disappear in a hole and hide for a while, and what was best for the company. Because we needed to think at the company level at that, at that point. It was no longer us thinking at the personal level because we had externalized now the business to the point of it was beyond what we could do just by ourselves, which meant that we had to think beyond ourselves and act at a bigger scale than just us. And that's a really scary place to be because suddenly we have to recognize it's not about me. It's not about my wants right now. I have this business that has needs that I have to attend to and that I have to be thinking about as I progress and as I grow as a person and at my business level. Well, and of course, there's the caveat that we always throw in of it's your business. If you want to shut it down, if you want to take a pause, take a a six-month hiatus, you are free to do that. You can make it however you want and structure it however you want. Your mental health and your personal safety comes first. But it is these times where we hit these roadblocks, whether they're, they come from ourselves or they come from external sources, where we have to reassess, is our company still on mission? Is it, what we, is it doing what we set out to do? Does it still align with our values and our goals for our personal lives? Colin and I have a big vision for our family. And every time we hit a roadblock in our company, we say, does this align us closer to the goal of that or further away? Yeah, does pushing through the roadblock, does solving the roadblock bring us closer to that vision or does it divert us into a different direction that we don't want to go? What possible solutions do we have before us that are actually going to work better for us? You know, our company, we have clients to serve. We have an income that we have to meet. And at that point, it is balancing these two. And that's why this is so hard because our businesses, we start them, we run them, we make them our own, we mold them after our needs, wants. We, we, we structure them around our fears and insecurities and we try and overcome those the best that we can. And at some point, we have to go, what's in the best interest of keeping the company alive versus what do I want to be doing at a personal level? And that is where we have to, to balance those. It is, it is, and it's not, it's not definitely not easy. If you want more personal time for yourself, if you want to go on more vacations and go on 18 cruises next year, you are likely going to have to hire employees in order to keep your business running and your and serving your clients or cut back on the business and be okay with a lower level of income. If the company needs you more because it's going through some turbulent times, maybe the economy is slowing down or maybe you have lost a lot of employees, that's going to demand a lot from you personally. It means those coffee dates or maybe those catch up with the friends or that book that you're wanting to get to, that may have to be shelved momentarily 
so that you can pour more into the business. And that's what's this. A lot of people talk about this work life balance. It is a myth. There's only one you. You only have so much energy, time, attention that you can have in a given day. And you have to decide what you're going to divert that to as your priorities and needs arise. Sometimes you have more or want to pour more into your personal life. Sometimes you have need and urgency to pour that more into the business. And that's what we found. We loathed having to stop pouring into our personal life and back into the company. It's not what we wanted to direct it to. But we knew that we had to if the business was going to survive to serve another client and do another dog walk. We knew that if we didn't do that, it wasn't going to make it another day. And that's where we went. And to know that you and I were not in the field for a while because we had employees and then we had to transition back to the field, which was fine. We love all the dogs and the cats <laughs> and the fish. But to, to know that that was just for a time, that we were going to be able to build back up, that it was going to be OK, that we were, again, going to push through the roadblock. There's that song about the bear of you can't go over it. You can't go around it. You have to go through it or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. But <laughs> but it's, it's true in business. If you encounter an obstacle, you have to figure out how you're going to get around it. Is that something completely different than what you were doing? If if you're like done with employees and done with the business, you just want to shut it down, that's fine. You're going to divert to the left. If you want to maybe just hire one or two people and you are more in the field, then you're going to divert to the right. Or if you're just going to push through and keep hiring so that you get out of the field completely, whatever the obstacle is, it could be with employees. It could be with clients. Maybe you've had a bad rash of clients really testing you and pushing your boundaries. But no matter the obstacle, figure out how you're going to get around it. And sometimes that does require self-sacrifice. I think that's something that we are all familiar with of going, nope, self, I have to put you off to the side for just a moment to focus on this other stuff. I have to put aside my current desires or my goals so that I can do this thing that is really important right now. Because again, we can only pour so much of ourselves into one thing at a time. And the danger comes, the toxicity comes in is when we stop allowing ourselves to pour back into ourselves because we think that's a bad thing. And that's why the talk of self-care and taking time away and mental health days is so critical because as entrepreneurs or small business owners, we don't give ourselves permission to pour back into ourselves. We think we have to continue to pour back into the business because it's going to suck everything up. The truth is, is that you can pour in one one day and one in another. But there are those times where you have to pour into the company versus yourself. And that self-sacrifice is where this comes in of knowing if I need to go under the tree that fell across the road, because that's what it is. You're being chased by a bear that you just found, and you have to run away from it and figure out, do you have to go over the log or under the log or over and around it and problem solve your way through that of going, okay, I may be really tired right now and not run from the bear, but if I don't run from the bear, I'm going to get eaten. So I've got to keep running and I've got to figure out how I'm going to get around this obstacle that's before me. Well, and something that we haven't talked about in a while is the financial aspect of this and and kind of thinking about and working through and crunching numbers of your minimum viable number of services that you need to do in a day. Yeah. And if you've hit this roadblock and you go, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do 20 visits in a day anymore. How many do you need to just make the budget happen. Do you just need eight in a day? That Then that can work for a time in order to put food on your table. Mm. Maybe you don't need to operate at 80, 90, 100% because you need to work through whatever you've just hit in your business. Yeah. And that was something for us too, of going, okay, well, if our employees aren't doing the visits anymore, we have to do fewer number of visits each day to actually make our financial numbers work out because we are bringing home more, a higher percentage of that than we were whenever our staff was doing that. And so that actually took a little bit of burden off of us to know, okay, we don't have to work at the capacity of three employees. We have to work at the capacity of us. And that was a a great piece of this puzzle. As we looked at this and as we worked on our mindset in this moment of going, okay, as we assess the situation, how severe is this? Because bad things will happen. It's one of the great truths (laughs) of our modern world. Bad things will happen. And when we prepare for that, we have that knowledge of going, I know bad things could happen. What can I do right now to help me prepare for that? One of those things is knowing your numbers and your financials so that when bad things happen, you don't have to panic about what you're going to meet and what's not because you have that on hand. 
Another thing that you can prepare for those bad times, for those struggle, is having a group around you to help support you through that. Having that network of other sitters, of other business owners, of friends, of family that are close to you that you can lean on, that can support and pour into your life when you struggle with it or during those times and help understand you when that's happening. Other things to help you through those bad times are having policies, procedures, SOPs, having things written out, planned out, so that you understand deeply your business and where you want to go. So when things go off the rails, you already have a plan so that you can start working your way back to that or adapting as necessary. And it probably isn't going to hit, when you have a plan, it probably isn't going to hit the specific point that you're dealing with right now. Right. Because there are an infinite number of things that can go wrong in a business. But generally have a roadmap for what you're going to do in worst case scenarios. Every business should have pet business insurance. As pet care professionals, your clients trust you to care for their furry family members. And that's why Petsters Associates is here to help. For over 20 years, they've provided thousands of members with quality pet care insurance. Because you work in the pet care industry, you can take your career to the next level with flexible coverage options, client connections, and complete freedom in running your business. Learn why Petsters Associates is the perfect fit for you and get a free quote at PetsitLLC.com. You can get a discount when you join by clicking Membership Pet Sitter Confessional and use the discount code CONFESSIONAL when you go to check out. Check out the benefits of membership and insurance once again at PetsitLLC.com. But before you act at any time, take a moment and assess and sit for a minute. You know, during this time where we lost our employees and they went off to do other things, it was so tempting to just panic and then freeze and get stuck in that moment. Really taking a few minutes, a few hours really, to, to sit and breathe and, and almost go through that grieving process to recognize, okay, I'm going to have to grieve the loss of the, at the personal level of what this, I'm going to work through that emotionally for me what this means for me as Colin and as Megan, what does that mean for us and how we feel about this? Then we have to put on our business hats and our CEO hats and go, now, at a business level, what do we do? How do we implement new things? What changes do we need to do? How do we communicate to people? And coming up with that plan, but the only way you're going to come up with that plan is A, if you've done a little bit of prep work, you know your numbers, you have some systems in place, And then B, you've sat and sat with it. You've taken a moment to sit with it for a few minutes or hours so that you can approach this with a cool, calm, and collected manner and ask yourself, at the personal level, how do I want to respond? And then at the business level, what do I need to do in this moment? Whatever the obstacle is, think about how you're going to respond to it, how you would respond to it as as a person, but then also how you will respond to it as a business in a professional manner. Because sometimes our personal emotions may get in the way of how we actually should respond as a business. We want to lash out. We want to say the curse word over the over the internet at somebody. We want to not act appropriately. But because we are CEOs, we are held to a different standard and and we should be. We should be the professional one. An employee can say whatever they want to us, but we can't say really what we want back. We have to, we are held to a different standard. We want to be a keyboard warrior and go off on somebody. (laughs) But for the person on the other side looking at this in six months as a potential client going, oh, that business responded this way. Oh, I don't want to do, I don't want to have anything to do with them. I don't want them to look after my pet because they didn't respond in a kind way. Yeah, I'd like to think of it a lot of times of going, how would Apple respond to a situation? How would how would Facebook, how how would Tesla, how would Microsoft or or how would, I don't know, you know, Tiffany's respond to these kind of things that come up? I'm sure the CEOs, the presidents, the entire C-suite board is just furious and livid about certain things, but they can't come out and they don't come out and respond and act in that way because of how damaging that would be and how off-putting that would be to the other clients and the, the, their obligations to the business, the company as a whole, to their existing or their, their remaining staff, employees, and clients, how would they want to be viewed? How do they want to treat others in that moment? And really making sure that that line is walked and understand what we can and should not be doing. And not to say that we need to be robotic and be heartless and cold and say, 
client. I, I don't care about you. This is this is a strictly a business transaction. I mean, we are a relationship business, so there does need to be some tact and some some grace and some warmth there when we respond to clients or employees. But oftentimes, we just need to stick to the facts and and do kind of leave it emotionless as best we can. Because once you've assessed those facts and you've come up with that action plan, now it's time to actually implement it and importantly here, move on. When we get stuck in these positions or like for Megan and I, when we had these employees leave, it was really tempting to not move on, to really stop, continue to circle back to that and really circle back to that pain and the hurt and the anguish. And we had to make sure that we personally were processing that in a healthy manner and we weren't bottling this up and pushing it off down the road. But our personal natures are also sometimes going, remember that time and remember that and think about that. And, oh, they still made me so angry. We had to, in the best interest of our company and importantly, because we were going to decide to to continue to hire, we couldn't bring in any of our negative emotions with the, the past experiences with our employees into the current ones that we were trying to hire and entice to work for our business. We couldn't bring any of that past experiences or of emotions and feelings into our conversations with them because then that would impact how they viewed us in our company. So we had to leave those interactions in the past and move forward and actually implement the plan that we had done and try our best. And again, this is where the personal and the business intermix so much of recognizing I still am really hurt about this or I'm, st- I'm reminded of the time that this XYZ thing happened. But I can't let that impact how I'm going to interact with this new person, this new client, this new pet, this new employee, this new potential sponsor or partnership or whoever that is that you're trying to do because you are focused on the positives and a plan that you need to implement. Yeah, it really is about separating them and moving on and moving upward. And this conversation is important whether you are a solo or have employees because as a business, you have a business identity. Your business has a voice. So what is that voice going to be? It should obviously be professional at every level, and it should be one that is clear and consistent. Your clients and potential clients know what is going to come from you. Think of it this way. If you respond back in a Facebook message to somebody who's made an inquiry to your Facebook page, whose name is on the top of that message? It's your business name. It's not you. You're not responding as you. You're responding as your business. That is a great way to start thinking about every single one of these interactions. When you respond, when, when, when there is a response, when there is a post, when there is a phone call, when there is an email, whose name is at the top of that? It's your business. There is a distinction between you and your business. Now, we make them as personalized as we can. We want them to be warm and authentic and personal so that that connects with the client's that we want and we can build in that trust and that deep relationship that we all want. At the end of the day, your business name is at the top of that, not yours. And so as we struggle to find out how we separate that, developing that business persona, developing that business voice, again, this, that's all part of your brand. This is what the colors are. This is what the font is. This is what the meaning is behind all of that. And that can be different and it should be a little different than who you are because who you are versus what your business is, is connecting with other people out there and operating in that way of going, my business is like this. Here's my business brand, my business name, my business logo and colors. And then I'm here and allowing yourself to sit in that and be okay with that and and, and rejoice in that separation because then it's just that much easier to not bring in the personal side and be personally hurt when things happen. We would love to know how you find boundaries between your personal and your business life. You can either email us at feedback at petsitterconfessional.com or you can look us up on Facebook or Instagram at Pet Sitter Confessional. We want to thank Pet Sitters Associates for sponsoring today's episode and thank you for taking your time, your most valuable asset in listening to this. We hope that some of these episodes are helpful to you. And if there's ever a topic you would like us to discuss or somebody you want us to interview, let us know. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. I'm <laughs> sorry.